Oh, Carl Perry, FCA Wrestling. Hey, super excited. We have Joey McKenna, three-time All-American from Ohio State University. He's going to lead us uh, in some incredible technique. And so, man, you better get ready because it's going to be good. So today we're going to start out on our feet. Um, one thing that I always like to start with is my position. So, right, we're always start across the line from our opponent. We shake hands if it's the beginning of a match. If not, we're face-to-face, -face. all right? A lot of times in wrestling, you know, we, we of course want a hand fight. We want to get our hands up top. We want to start pulling on a guy's head so we can get him tired. But we need to do that very intentionally, all right? If we just reach up out of our stance here, I'm opening my body up for my opponent to attack me, okay? So I like to be very systematic in the way I approach a hand fight. So the first thing that we're gonna do, all right, I'm gonna start with my righty lead, my righty hand, I wanna keep down. Whatever lead leg you are, you wanna keep that lead, head, lead hand down just in case our partner takes a shot on us, all right? So I'm gonna start my hand fight in what I call a low hand fight. First, I'm gonna initiate by, with my lead hand, attacking a wrist. All right, so I start with this low hand fight till I can eventually climb up my opponent's arm till I can get my hands on him in a safe way where I'm never opening up my hips so he can attack me. So I'm in this nice low stance. All right, we're matching head levels here. I'm gonna reach out, grab his wrist with my lead hand. One thing that I'm specifically doing, guys, I'm grabbing this uh, thumb inside grip Sometimes people grab it like this. These are two totally different grips on the wrist. So the reason why I'm grabbing straight forward is because the next thing I wanna do, I'm gonna close the gap with my head. So we're head to head. I'm gonna pass his wrist from my one hand to the other to what we would call a baseball grip, all right? We know this is a baseball grip because if this was a bat, set my hip in, all right, swing the bat. So I initially make contact with my lead hand, nice and low, catch wrist, forehead to forehead contact. All right, again, I don't wanna slip to this ear to ear. This equals out the position. I wanna keep my forehead here, so I'm in the dominant. Pass to this baseball grip, all right? From here, my lead hand is now gonna come to the collar. I'm gonna spin for us here because when I get this collar, guys, my elbow needs to be down. If my elbow's up, this is just a lazy collar tie position. So we always wanna make sure that we're in this really good position. My elbow is in between his collarbone and his shoulder here. My head is forehead to forehead. Now I can release this wrist and bring my other hand inside tie. So from another angle, low hand fight, catch wrist. Baseball grip, forehead to forehead, outside hand comes up, my elbow is down, all right? I like to use my forearm here to frame their collarbone, all right? This is so that I can get drive and use this forearm to push, to pull, so I get both my hands and my feet involved as I'm moving a guy. One thing that a lot of people think when we think about hand fighting, a lot of times we just think, hang on the head, pull, right, pull this guy down. But our feet moving at the same time is super important. All right, that's what's gonna be able to allow us to turn our opponent's body, create angles, and eventually get to our shots. So again, we're gonna start with our low hand fight, catching wrist, pass across, all right, so I go pass across to my opposite hand, collar tie, my forearm is framing right up here in his collar, elbows down. Once I get this collar, I'm still head to head, I can now let go of this wrist and move to my inside tie. From here, I like to push with what I call a lunge step. So I'm gonna actually step into this front leg like a lunge, and now I'm gonna use my whole body to push him. So I step in on my own, step up. This is this lunge step. 
The reason why I'm doing this, guys, I need to move my partner's center of gravity back. All right, right now I'm in my freestyle career, so the out of bounds line is very huge. I can get a point by pushing a guy out of bounds, so taking ground and putting pressure with both my feet and my hand flight is super important. All right? And Joey, if I had to, uh, from, from, from my position here, something that I've never felt as long as I've been in the sport of wrestling uh, is, is when your elbow comes inside, it makes me extremely uncomfortable. So when you hear his elbow is down, there's intentionality with this elbow, rather being out, uh, which is it's just so different here. I mean, to me, I'm already uncomfortable, and I'm, I'm almost ready to bail is almost how I feel as, as, as his opponent. So good stuff. Yeah, guys. So what, the one thing I'm doing with that is I'm really controlling this side of Coach Perry's body. All right. I have this elbow down, right, framing in between his collarbone and his shoulder. And now this allows me to actually slide my head a little bit into his temple. All right, so when I slide my head to his temple, I'm starting to create an angle on this side that makes him feel really uncomfortable and circle in front. Now I can get into my inside tie, collar tie, and again, this lunge step. So I'm gonna lower my level, all right? When I lower my level, when I take this lunge, guys, I need to make sure that my head and shoulders drop as well. And I'm using my whole body to take ground. If I don't use my whole body and I just try to push into him, all right, my feet are gonna be straight. He can maybe snap me down, all right? Gives him more things to do. So low hand fight, inside tie. Now I'm here. So I'm creating this lunge step. When you start pushing into a guy, they're probably not gonna like it. They're probably gonna push back into you, all right? And this is where we're gonna start playing with this idea of pressure release to start turning our opponent's head and shoulders and creating an angle. So off of my low hand fight, get to this collar tie, inside tie, lunge step, lunge step. Now I feel pressure back into me. As I'm starting to feel pressure back into me, I'm using his head and shoulders as a steering wheel. If I brought his head to this bicep, I can steer him this way or I can steer him the opposite way. So my hands are being used as somewhat of a steering wheel. So I make this contact, inside tie, lunge step, lunge step, create that pressure back into us. Once I feel my partner coming back into me, I'm gonna use this collar hand. It's gonna come down to the back of the head. And really guys, this outside hand is what's guiding his head and shoulders by me. And that allows me to create this angle. Once I create the angle, guys, I need to start circling my feet at an angle. If I just circle with it, we're gonna stand in front of each other. So when I do, I lunge step, lunge step, get pressure back into me. When I start steering his head through here, my hands are following this, called wax on motion. All right, wax on, wax off. Gonna pull through and immediately, you see how I cut an angle towards his hips. Whenever I'm shooting on my opponent, I wanna be shooting into his hips and really keeping tight. Because eventually when we're in live wrestling, my partner's not just gonna stand there and walk by me, right? He's gonna be wrestling me back 100% and trying to score on his own right. So I need to make sure I'm doing everything right and creating this angle to follow it up with a shot. One thing I love about that, uh, Joey, you know, we talk about a lot that people hand fight and then they shoot. Whereas you, it's, it's all in one motion. When you pass that by, even at the corner of my eye, I can see you already in a, in a position where you're gonna penetrate through on a, whether you're passing by or whatever you're gonna do next, but your feet are already set to shoot within your hand fighting. So it's all in one motion, good stuff. Yeah, and actually one drill I do in my own stance in motion to kind of mimic that is I call it a corkscrew circle. 
So when we're doing stance in motion, we're always over-exaggerating things because we don't have a partner in front of us. So we have to imagine there is somebody. So this corkscrew circle, instead of these big, right, big circles around, a corkscrew circle, see how my foot pretty much stays in this center spot? And I'm really, I'm using my hands and my head and my footwork to create the angle. Okay, so when I'm doing my own stance in motion, moving around, I'm corkscrew circling and really over-exaggerating it. I might do it for 20 seconds. Am I gonna do it like that in a match? Probably not, but I need to, see how I immediately make that turn and as soon as I steer his head and shoulders by me, okay, as soon as I steer these by, I'm following up this pass by, ready for my shot. 